Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for the second of three videos looking at the recent wave of character options Doctor Who sets exclusive to B&M. And in this video we are returning to the history of the Daleks and this time it's set number 13 which is the Five Doctors. Now this is a bit of a cheeky one and a little bit contentious because the Five Doctors isn't a Dalek story really. There is a very brief appearance by a Dalek uh, with the first Doctor as played by Richard Handel as opposed to William Hartnell of course who had sadly passed away by this point. Uh, so this is a little bit cheeky that this has been included in the history of the Daleks and there's a little bit of skullduggery on the part of character options here because the history of the Daleks number 13 really should have been Resurrection of the Daleks uh, and we've been told that we're not going to get a set dedicated to Resurrection of the Daleks because that set has been revisited a couple of times in the past which doesn't really make sense to me since character options seem to have no problem with endless variants of Daleks and endless variants of action figures. One only needs to look at David Tennant or Tenth Doctor figures to know that they've done about a thousand and one versions of that particular character so it doesn't quite ring true to me and it's a bit frustrating because I for one am one of those people who missed out on the resurrection of the Daleks. Dalek, particularly that supreme Dalek with the white bumps uh, and it's a little bit frustrating that we're not getting that. That being said this is a bit of a surprise and actually quite a pleasing one because it's interesting that they've given us a brand new sculpt uh, and a brand new iteration of the first Doctor which as I said is played by Richard Herndl and has his likeness. So with my rant over, let's start off by taking a look at the packaging. Of course, this is brand new packaging, brand new branding on the packaging. Uh, we can see the new Doctor Who diamond logo there for the 60th anniversary. It looks really cool. I much, much prefer this uh, to the other one that we've seen over the last few years. Uh, the overall packaging itself is just a lot brighter and more colourful. We have a fantastic image of the TARDIS there in the bottom left-hand corner. Of course, we have a lot more blues and whites, and it just uh, pops overall a lot more. It's a lot more attractive, and I just think this is uh, a lot more fun than the rather drab grey and blue packaging we've had over the last five or six years. Now if we flip the packaging and look at the side panel we can see that this is quite a chunky bit of space and sadly it has gone to waste. Uh, we do just have that diamond logo which looks very nice but it's a shame they couldn't have done something else here with it. Perhaps an image of the first Doctor, perhaps an image with the Daleks uh, still taken from the story or maybe an illustration or something uh, because it would be nice to stack these up on the shelf side by side and have uh, some nice images on display but it wasn't meant to be. If we flip it and look at the back of the packaging of course we just have a lot of small print here. Again the overall Colours are a lot brighter and a lot more colourful, but still pretty bland in this arena. Uh, we have a little bit of information about the Five Doctors as the story itself, and then we have a little bit of information about the production, about the Dalek, and about the actor. Now, quite interesting, there's a little bit of a gaffe here, because they do refer to the actor as William Herndl. Of course, it was Richard Herndl <laughs> replacing the actor William Hartnell, uh, so a little bit of a gaffe there. Uh, but otherwise, quite interesting stuff to, to note, uh, quite quite detailed in terms of the production qualities, etc. And I think the done a, a nice job and this is always quite interesting for uh, adult collectors who you know like this kind of thing. And then if we look at the interior card inlay, we can see these wonderful blue lines, this central white light at the front there, well, sorry, in the center of the packaging. And I think this is meant to be the TARDIS light, the lamp uh, lit up perhaps, uh, but this looks really good anyway. Uh, and I think it looks really very effective. This is quite cool, very eye-catching, helps the figures pop in the packaging and is uh, pretty colorful and fun. So if we start off by taking a look at the Richard Herndl interpretation of the First Doctor, you'll see that obviously they've recycled the First Doctor body that we've seen before, but he has a brand new head sculpt. And I have to say, I actually think this is a pretty good head sculpt. I think there's actually a pretty decent likeness of the actor, and they've managed to capture his look and likeness quite well, I think, particularly when it comes to the hair, which I really do like that this is puffed out a lot more, particularly around the, the back of the ears curling round there. I think this looks pretty cool. Now it's quite soft, Obviously, it doesn't have a lot of the depth and texture when it comes to the wrinkles uh, and detail on his face. But this, I think, is recognisable as that actor, that specific version of the character. And I think it works pretty well. And there's some nice paint washes running through the hair as well, just to give it a little bit more depth and texture. And for the most part, it looks pretty good. 
And if you're curious to see how this sculpt compares with a William Hartnell sculpt, here is the first Doctor, another B&M exclusive that came with the electronic TARDIS a couple of years ago. And so you can see that obviously these look very, very different, very distinct, and the William Hartnell face is a lot more narrow and streamlined and aquiline, and the Richard Handel is a, is a lot broader. Now obviously the Hartnell has the hat, so it does skew things ever so slightly, but you can see that this is actually quite noticeably different. And clearly meant to represent a different interpretation of the character. And for anyone who's curious, here he is next to the David Bradley sculpt. And at the time, I really wasn't very impressed with the David Bradley sculpt. It just didn't look very much like David Bradley to me. It just looked like a generic or soft version of William Hartnell. I couldn't really feel that. I didn't think it was specifically David Bradley. Uh, whereas I think here, again, you can see a great contrast between these two sculpts, obviously clearly very different. And for me, this is a lot closer to the actor Richard Handel than the David Bradley version was to David Bradley. When it comes to the torso, the legs and the arms, there's really not a lot to talk about here. If you already own a First Doctor figure from Character Options, then you're getting the same thing again. There might be some very minor paint tweaks, but nothing that I could really detect to talk about in particular. So this is simply a recycled and reissued. But what does seem to be new, though, are the hands. You'll notice that he has got his fingerless gloves, so they've been painted in. I don't think we've had that before. Uh, again, this seems to be specific, I think, to the Richard Handel interpretation, although I I could be wrong on that. Um, and this looks really good. So I actually think this is a, a very minor tweak, but actually surprisingly effective. So let's take a look at the articulation. No real surprises here. There is a straight swivel at the neck, but what you will notice, or what I noticed with the mine, is that as soon as I started to turn it, the head wanted to pop off. Uh, so you can see how this has been rather loosely placed uh, on the William Hartnell body, which maybe hasn't been totally thought through. <laughs> now, there is a straight swivel at the shoulder, so the arm will lift up and out. There's a complementary bicep swivel, so the arm will rotate from side to side, and there is a single joint at the elbow there, allowing the lower arm to bend about 90 degrees. Of course, there is also a swivel at the wrist, so the hand will rotate all the way around. There's another swivel at the waist, allowing the figure to move from side to side. There is a hinge at the hips, allowing the legs to kick out to the side slightly, but this is hindered by the coat. And then there is a complementary thigh swivel as well. The leg will kick forward, it won't really kick back with at all and there is another single joint this time at the knee. Okay, so let's take a look at the Dalek. Now, I have to admit, my expectations were pretty low for this Dalek because I've had many of this colorization in the past, so there didn't seem to be anything particularly new or exciting about this particular Dalek. However, that said, I'm pleasantly surprised by it and I actually like it a lot more than I was anticipating. Of course, when it comes to the sculpt, it is your bog standard Dalek. There's nothing really new here at all, but the paint apps are quite interesting. And they actually serve to give this Dalek a lot of individuality and personality, which is quite interesting because I'd never really noticed some of these details on the Dalek in that particular story. But what you will see here is that he does have red ears or red indicator lights. And these look quite striking to me. I think this colour contrast works really, really well. Likewise, at the very tip of his gun arm, you can see there is a bit of red paint there as well, which, again, I wasn't expecting. It's such a little, little detail, but it actually makes a big difference. I actually really like this little bit of splash of colour here. just really brings this style to life and gives it a bit more personality, and I'm really pleased to see this. As for the rest of the Dalek, there's really not much else to say. If you've ever owned one of the Character Options Classic Daleks, then it's the same sculpt, and most of the paint apps are very, very familiar by this point if you've collected any of the other History of the Dalek sets. Likewise, in terms of the articulation, it's the standard articulation you'll know and love by this point. There is a swivel at the top of the dome, of course, there is a hinge with the eye stalk, and there are two ball joints for the gun and plunger arms, which will move up and down and side to side. Of course, there are three wheels on the base of the Dalek and it will move forwards, backwards, side to side. You know what to expect. As a quick scale comparison, here are the two figures standing next to each other. As you can see, the Herndall First Doctor is ever so slightly taller than a Dalek and that's exactly as it should be. And I think these scale very nicely together. So, all in all then, this is actually quite a nice set, this is actually quite pleasing, very unexpected, it wasn't something uh, I expected them to release, I never thought we'd get a Richard Handel interpretation of the first Doctor <laughs> in the 5 inch scale, but here he is, and I have to say, I'm actually quite pleased to have him, I think this version of the first Doctor is much more successful than the sculpting of the David Bradley version of the Doctor, so this is a massive win for me, I think this is actually really good, and as I said, something of a pleasant surprise. So, for me, I'm actually going to give this set a 
four stars. I actually think it's quite welcome. Now, I think you have to be a massive Who fan uh, to, to, to get in this set, really, to be honest. Uh, you have to really know your lore, um, and I think you have to really appreciate the five Doctors uh, and your Daleks. But, um, yeah, to be fair, I would imagine you are that person if you're watching this video anyway, so I think you'll be very pleased with this set. And for me, of the three sets in this wave, this is probably the best of them. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.